we sailed on the brand new Norwegian Encore across the North Atlantic for its nine-night transatlantic crossing to New York City. With 18 restaurants and dining venues, we tried a lot of them. Let's check out all the great food we had aboard the Norwegian Encore. Welcome to Taste Your Travel. Before we dig into all this great food, if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. But if you're new here and like travel vlogs, cruise and travel tips, please click subscribe and be sure to hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we upload every video. With her 18 restaurants, there's something for everyone on the Norwegian Encore. We tried 11 of them, and by the end of this two-part video series, I am sure you'll be able to tell which were our favorites. First up, shortly after boarding the ship in Southampton, UK, we went to American Diner. Impressed with our experience at Margaritaville at Sea on the Norwegian Bliss, we were hoping for a similar experience. Well, this certainly did disappoint. American Diner is an a la carte restaurant. All items are priced individually. Let's take a look at what we had. First up, we ordered the loaded nachos for an appetizer to share. Expecting something at least close to the volcano nachos at Margaritaville, these were anything but. A small portion and poor quality. This wasn't getting off to a great start, and it wasn't going to get much better. For the main entree, I ordered the French dip. This wasn't too bad, but I did make the comment that it tasted a lot like pastrami. It certainly wasn't the best French dip sandwich that I have ever eaten. Missy opted for the crispy chicken sandwich. This was a big disappointment. A small piece of chicken that we determined was actually dark meat from the chicken thigh. Someone needs to tell a Norwegian that a chicken sandwich is made with chicken breast. So much bun with so little chicken didn't make for the best crispy chicken sandwich. We also had a look at their milkshakes on the table card and thought about those for dessert. But after the disappointing appetizer and entree and the fact that all items were priced independently, we opted to head to Garden Cafe and enjoyed some delicious, creamy, soft serve ice cream. Next up, after getting settled in, we went to the Manhattan Room, one of the three complimentary dining rooms on the ship. Here's a quick look at the menu, which includes appetizers, most of which change every evening, but there are some there, like the French onion soup and Caesar salad, that are nightly regulars. Classic entrees are their standard dishes that are on the menu every evening. And today's featured entrees are different every night. Additionally, wine recommendations are also provided. For starters, Missy had the French onion soup, and I had the Stilton cheese soup. Both were quite delicious. I also had an appetizer of the smoked mozzarella ravioli, which was rather tasty. For our main entrees, I ordered the herb roasted chicken after asking the waiter exactly what it was, and he described it as a half chicken. However, like that chicken sandwich earlier, it clearly was all dark meat and simply a chicken quarter of thigh and leg. Disappointed, I sent it back and requested the carved whole roasted beef sirloin, which is also what Missy had ordered. I sure am glad I did, because we both thought the sirloin was rather delicious. It came with a side of broccoli, potato wedges, and of course, au jus. For dessert, we both ordered the Nutella creme brulee. This was tasty, even though it did come out cold. I also had to add a chocolate lava cake that included a side of ice cream and strawberry compote. Quite satisfying, even though it lacked that soft molten center that you would expect from a delicious lava cake. Missy also finished out the meal with a cup of tea. After what was a bit of a lackluster day food-wise on our first day, we head into day two. I check in at American Diner to see if they're serving breakfast like they did at Margaritaville at Sea on the Bliss. Well, at least for our crews, they didn't. Closed with the lights out, I head over to Garden Cafe, which is the main buffet on the Norwegian Encore. One of only two venues open for breakfast on our cruise, and I'll show you a little later on why Garden Cafe was the best of the two. At Garden Cafe, I enjoy some sausage, eggs, bacon and potatoes, along with biscuits and gravy. This turns out to be a pretty good way to start the day. With a big meal planned for later that evening at Tapanyaki, we don't have lunch, but head over there for dinner. 
We had a four-night specialty dining package while on board the Norwegian Encore, and this was our first chance to take advantage of it. The draw of teppanyaki isn't necessarily the food, but rather the show from the chef who prepares your meal right there in front of you. There you go. And <laughs> The meal starts out with some miso soup and seaweed salad. That sure sounds appetizing, doesn't it? It's seaweed, come on now. I enjoyed both of these, but Missy does not, so she skipped each of them. Then you're served freshly prepared fried rice, vegetables, and we got our favorite, filet mignon. Super tender and served with two sauces for dipping, just delicious. We end our meal with some fresh fruit. You will rarely go wrong with a meal at the teppanyaki even if the meal isn't great, the show put on by the chef will always make up for it. Every meal that we have had at the Teppanyaki has always been fantastic. For a late night snack, I went to the local bar and grill for some buffalo chicken wings along with ranch dressing for dipping, along with some fish and chips. The chicken wings here are always excellent, and the fish and chips were very good. They do have a tendency to overcook the fish sometimes, but overall, a good way to end the day before heading back to the cabin to call it quits for the night. On to the next day, I head back up to the Garden Cafe for an American style breakfast with ham and cheese omelet, sausage links, potatoes and hash browns. You gotta get those carbs in there somewhere. The breakfast at Garden Cafe seems to never disappoint. For lunch, it's time to hit that local bar and grill again. Serving traditional style pub fare, this complimentary 24 hour restaurant is certainly one that is not to miss on board the Norwegian Encore. We opt to try out the loaded nachos here and compare them to the $7 loaded nachos upstairs at American Diner. While not an oversized portion, it compares quite well to the nachos at the diner. Having tried them both now, we really couldn't tell that much of a difference. Really, comparing $7 versus free for pretty much the same thing, who wouldn't pick free? So skip those nachos upstairs and go for the nachos at the local bar and grill instead. Missy then had pretzel bites, which come with a side of beer cheese sauce for dipping, always one of her favorites. We each then had a tortilla bowl for our main entrees, Missy's with barbacoa beef and mine with pork carnitas. Topped with cheese, salsa, black beans and extra sour cream, these were delicious. For dessert, we each had the carrot cake, pretty good, but that cream cheese icing was just a little overwhelming. After an evening at Choir of Man, we barely made it to taste for dinner. This along with Saver in the Manhattan Room are the three complimentary dining rooms on board the Encore. For starters, we each ordered the white cheddar and potato soup. Quite tasty. For an appetizer, I had the Asian spare ribs with vegetable summer roll which came along with a side of lime chili sauce for dipping. These had an excellent flavor and were not too heavy to fill me up for the main course, which for me was the barbecue mixed grill. Pork ribs, bratwurst and chicken with a bourbon barbecue sauce along with a side of broccoli. And I subbed in mashed potatoes for those sweet potato fries that it came with. Missy went for the grilled roasted sirloin along with au jus and mashed potatoes, baked potato and some creamed spinach. Yum. Another day and another morning at the Garden Cafe for some of the usuals. Though this time, I added in some corned beef hash and French toast with sweet banana sauce. The French toast rarely disappoints, but the banana sauce on this was very sweet, and I also failed to add the whipped cream topping that would have made this so much better. And I returned to the cabin with some pastries and bacon for Missy, and well, I might have had a few too. Our lunch today was perhaps a little bit unusual. We didn't go to a regular restaurant, but rather went to Coco's, the ice cream and dessert shop on board the ship. Lots of seating and this place wasn't busy. Coco's charges for each item a la carte. Plenty of delectable desserts to pick from, along with a selection of deluxe milkshakes 
gelato, and enormous sundaes. Let's take a quick flip through of their menu. Specialty milkshakes for $12. Sundays eight dollars, and crepes were five to six dollars. Probably made for two or more people, we each ordered a Sunday of our own. Hopefully, it tastes as good as it looks, right? Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> More chocolate. Hey, we yes. like chocolate, right? Yes, yeah. a lot of chocolate. Yes. Sprinkle with love. <laughs> Can't have too much gelato. <laughs> it's almost small. Missy had the decadent brownie s'mores ice cream coupe with chocolate fudge, gelato, and topped with fluffy marshmallow cream, graham cracker crumbs, and whipped cream. Her comment that this was very good, but also very sweet. I opted instead for the Nutella and milk chocolate ice cream sundae, made with chocolate gelato, shaved chocolate, candied walnuts, peanut butter sauce, and all topped with whipped cream. Truly extraordinary. We were very full after leaving Coco's. Who would have thought ice cream could make you that full? I do have to say, at $8 each, plus gratuity, these sundaes are probably the best value on the ship. Each includes four scoops of gelato. Just three scoops of gelato on their own will cost you $9 if ordered separately. Why pay more when you can get a fantastic sundae for less? We highly recommend the sundaes at Coco's. As if we hadn't had enough, we are a glutton for punishment. For evening dinner, it was off to our second specialty dining of the cruise, this time at Cagney's Steakhouse. USDA steaks always cooked to perfection. With the specialty dining package, you can select a starter, a super salad, and one of the featured selections, grilled classics, or a dish from the seafood section. Do note that some of the items do have an additional surcharge if you're using the specialty dining package. Our experience was that you could order any or as many of the sides that you desired. Missy started out with a thick cut bacon that had a super smoky flavor, and I had the iceberg wedge salad with blue cheese dressing. We both ordered the 16 ounce ribeye cooked medium rare. If you aren't eating your steaks medium rare, what's wrong with you? Start doing it now. Cook to perfection with all the flavor that the perfect ribeye brings. At Cagney's, sides are served family style. They bring the sides out in small dishes to share. For our sides, we had potatoes or gratin, sauteed garlic mushrooms, mac and cheese, and onion rings. Have you ever noticed how the onion rings on every cruise and every restaurant is always the same? Really, what's up with that? For dessert, we each ordered the OMG Caramel Butterscotch Cake. Missy's comment on this was that it was perhaps the best dessert that she had had on the ship, though I don't know, it would be hard to compare to those Sundays earlier from Coco's. Though I have to admit, while I'm not a big fan of caramel, these were fantastic. They really live up to their name, OMG. Moving on, another breakfast at Garden Cafe for day five. I promise you, we do eat somewhere else for breakfast. Though as you'll find out, we wish we really hadn't. For breakfast, it was some more of the usuals, with a couple new items, eggs, sunny side up, English sausage, French toast, and some untoasted toast. I did actually run this through the toaster, but as you can see, it didn't really do very much. You gotta have some toast anytime you're having eggs sunny side up. 
On to lunch, it was back at the local, starting to become a regular stomping ground now. They almost know us by name. Spinach and artichoke dip for Missy, along with chicken pot pie. We thought how they made this was rather interesting. Basically a chicken stew or soup with a piece of puff pastry tossed on top. I started out with those delicious buffalo chicken wings, but this time I asked for some blue cheese dressing for dipping. Seriously, ask for the blue cheese dressing. So much better than with ranch for buffalo wings. You will thank me later. Then, I also had a blue cheese burger, melted blue cheese on a beef patty atop a bun with lettuce, tomato, and a side of fries and a pickle spear. For dessert, instead of having something from the menu at the local, Missy stopped at Starbucks for one of her favorites, a caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino. And I went out to the Garden Cafe for some soft serve ice cream. After spending some time relaxing around the ship, we headed over to Savor Restaurant, our first time here for dinner, although the menus here are identical to the menu also served at Taste and the Manhattan Room. Missy went for the stuffed mushroom caps, and I had the ranchero beef mini tostadas as an appetizer. Both were quite delicious. For our entrees, she ordered the potato gnocchi with a pesto cream sauce, sun-dried tomatoes, and pine nuts. After just one taste, it wasn't for her, so I had to eat some of it instead. I thought this was excellent. Missy then got the three cheese baked ziti, which she really did enjoy. For my main entree, I had already ordered the country fried chicken a leg and a thigh piece with a side of corn on the cob and mashed potatoes with what looked like beef gravy. Not sure why there'd be beef gravy with the chicken dish. Of course, all the gravy on board seems to always taste the same, regardless of what they call it. Another one of those strange cruise food things, just like those onion rings. My fried chicken also had a hockey puck-like biscuit. This certainly wasn't something that I would go back for. For dessert, I had the banana split. Pretty good as evidenced here from the empty bowl afterwards. Not really sure what Missy had for dessert this evening. We have come to the end of part one of our food tour of what we ate on the Norwegian Encore. Be sure to check back shortly. Part two is coming up. Or if it's already been posted, the link will be in the description below and in an end card at the end of this video. Be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.